Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today I am building a user blueprint that I found on the Steam Workshop and I'm building it in my original world which is the very first world that I ever created in Creativeverse almost three years ago. Yeah, a long while ago. Anyways, this is, I well first off, let me start back. So, um, a week ago, I think it was, I had tweeted out a couple pictures of this, me just starting and building this um, blueprint. I guess actually just a couple few days ago. Let's see, this is Wednesday, I, I don't know, Friday or Saturday. So almost a week ago, I had tweeted those pictures out and was kind of teasing you guys with what I was going to be making a video about and if you had any idea what it was going to be and who it belonged to and all that. And of course, nobody did. But <laughs> this this is such an awesome, awesome, cool blueprint. So I found this blueprint. It was actually, I had was gonna play the game Creativeverse and I had, you know, logged into the Steam, opened up my library and clicked on the game. But before I logged in, I noticed on the workshop, you know, I always kind of look at the blueprints that are being shown that are like, I think the most popular or whatever for that week. Um, so I saw this and I thought, oh, that looks kind of neat. Let me click on that. So I clicked on it and I was like, I got to build this. And then I decided, well, I've got to make a video about it. So here we are. That's how I found it. So this blueprint belongs to a user um, player named Fush, Fush, <laughs> named Fishhook. Now, I have not built anything from this person before. I This is the first time for me, and I don't know that they've got a lot of builds. Um, I know he has this one, and then he actually takes this one, and he's put it into chunks of blue, different blueprints. So, like, you don't have to have this huge, ba massive blueprint. You can do each section separately, which is really, really cool. Um, and by the way, this is this build is pretty big. It's over just over 35,000 blocks, which is not the biggest build I've done. The biggest build I've done it was Two Gaming Girls um, Magic School, which was I, I can't remember offhand, but I know it's more than 35,000. I think it's like 36 or some thousand, 37,000 blocks or something like that. But it's quite large. This is almost that size. But anyways, so I it is this. I'm all over the place today, guys. I apologize, but this this blueprint is pretty pretty unique and it's pretty cool. Um, right now, it starts with so I'm trying to think of how to tell you best this this blueprint is because it is so large and it took me a really long time to build because I don't use a lot of the autofill in it. Um, it took me longer. I've had to cut out like quite a few sections so you're gonna see it jump around at times and I apologize for that but I didn't want you know a 10 hour video so I'm trying to make this as short as it possible so I did cut out a lot and I've actually had trouble today recording this voiceover I don't know how many times I've stopped and started but we're gonna press through we're finally gonna get this done we're doing this right now so anyways so the first level when you start building it, it is all corruption stuff. It's the corrupted dirt, corrupted stone, and corrupted stone wall. And then it's like framed, as you can see here, it's framed in limestone wall, limestone column, all kinds of different limestone things. It's like framed by those things. And there's like, it fits into, this whole build fits into one single claim. And each, this whole thing is cut up into sections as you can see here right now I'm building I think is what like the workshop area it's mainly obsidian stone and some a bunch of limestone stuff of course but that's one whole section separate none of these connect they're all a one block width apart and so you have different sections I think there is actually a total of 16 different squares um, so that's different sections. So you have different biomes. That's what this, I think I neglected to tell you because I have recorded this now so many times. I'm thinking I'm told you things, told you guys the things that I haven't. But the name of this blueprint um, is, in case I didn't, and I had deleted that out and I didn't cut it out, now I'm gonna laugh. Um, the name of this blueprint is Fish Hooks Biome Base, no, Biome Tile Base spawner workshop farm home i had to write it down it is quite a lengthy 
title there. But it basically, that's what it is. This is, it's a spawner. It has all the different biomes in it that spawn all the different creatures. And it can be your base. It can be a home for you. It's got a workshop, it's got storage. I will set, warn you, it doesn't have a whole lot of storage in it, but you can add on to it. It doesn't have a whole lot of processors. There's kind of, you can kind of see that here. Um, because this is the workshop area. It doesn't have very many processors or forges in it at all. So you, if you're like me and you have like a lot of that, you may want to add on to it um, or find different areas to put things. Um, but it's a real, really still a really cool build. There's like a liquids farm and a, you know, a spawner, like a death box, death box, kill box, whatever you want to call it, where you get loot from the mobs that drop into it. Kind of similar to what Starscream had built in her storage solutions that I did a video a while ago on um, like that. And it does work. I have been getting thing, things out of it. So right now I just was building um, the, I think the deserty area. So the whole entire thing is nothing but framed in nothing but limestone stuff, which I really like. It actually makes it kind of gives it that Romanesque kind of feeling to it. And I like that. I, that's a really, I really need to do more builds like that. I like the Roman style stuff. Um, but yeah, so this area right now is the desert. We've got your cactuses and stuff and you, and your water. You've got like a little white oasis, oasis going on there and I can't talk. What else is new? <laughs> And then right next to it is going to be, I believe this is the mountains. I could be, oh, canyons, I think. Um, it's really nicely color coded too, which I found really nice because I've, it's just a lot of, of different blocks kind of break things up and make it different. So you can kind of say, oh, we're in the desert because it's got the gold floor or gold wall around the side. So you can see that peeking out, which I will show at the end of this video, I will, you know, show you guys what it is up close and personal as I always do. But then right here we have some of the hardened lava wall that is building that is to frame in this desert. I think it's the desert area. And then you have cobblestone that frames in the, oh, I want to say, um, swamp area. Yes, the swamp area there. So you have all of these different things, uh, the desert, the, the savanna, the swamp, all of that um, to spawn those different types of critters. So and essentially when you need certain things for mobs, you don't have to go very far. You can just go to here and kill the mobs and they'll spawn again. That's really nice. I like that idea. So I did build this right behind my um, base in the waters he does recommend that you build it in the waters he has like a lot of notes too when you go to if you go to get this there's like a lot of he tells you exactly how many blocks it is and you know the purpose of it the function whatever and where it should be built and all that which is helpful and good so yeah it's built right behind my storage my industrial storage build in my original world and in the water so I will probably build actually more onto it leading from the land to this since it is in the water I'll probably because it's not very easy to get up in here I mean I could probably set up teleporters which I probably will but I'm thinking I'm gonna build a dock to it so we'll see I'll just have to play with it but here we are we're building some more um, desert area I think yeah we just did the savanna over there or started it anyways I did run out of a few blocks I thought I had them all I checked them all off on my list but apparently I checked off the wrong ones because when I went to go get them they were not there <laughs> so either blocks are disappearing again or I didn't get them I'm thinking I didn't get them but maybe I did I don't know but anyways I there were some I did jump back and forth between different areas because I didn't have the blocks and obviously this build is so big you can't fit everything into your inventory you can't fit all of the blocks in your inventory you're gonna have to have you know a treasure box by or treasure box a storage box by nearby to put everything in because it is so big
And here we have just the wood wall going around. This is, I think this is the, for the gardens. Yes, this is for, for the farms. You have with all your vegetables and stuff in it. He has separate areas for that that connect to your home base or is on your home base. So I think every, each block has their own biome, but I think two or three of the blocks are the actual workshop and spawner and all of that and that's made that's where i'm at here building again with that we're doing the outside of the farms right now and this does go quite high the the actual workshop area is i think three high above the corruption corruption layer so you have this bottom layer of nothing but corruption like i had said and then you have the top, top layer, the next layer is the biomes. And each biome is like maybe two or three blocks high, but the um, workshop is obviously quite high. As you'll see at the end, you'll know what I'm talking about. I know I probably don't make much, much sense right now, but you'll see what I'm talking about when I tell you that this is the highest stop spot on this build and it's pretty cool because so, um i think it was avalor actually on twi twitter not twitch on twitter that had said when i posted the picture of um the screenshots of it he's like what are you building it's flat well yeah at that time it was flat it is not flat there's different levels of it and it, that's really cool and you get a better look at the end of this video of that Oh, and then before I forget, in case you're wondering, I have been gone for a couple of weeks now. Um, the week before, well, two weeks ago, I was just really, really busy. And then last week, I actually, the week of the 4th, 4th of July, the week before and into the 4th of July, I guess. The first week of July, we'll just say. I had no internet, guys. If you follow me on Twitter, you will know this about me because I tweeted it out. My internet totally cracked out. Like, we woke up in the middle of the night my husband has set up this whole um security system in our house it's from it's by uh, google home so our whole security system is based off of that which is connected to the internet and we woke up to oh you're offline you're offline and so we didn't have any internet and we're like what, what what's going on here so we thought it was just a temporary thing but no, it lasted and it lasted and we called, my husband called, I should say, I didn't. We, is this not me, is in my husband called and they said that they couldn't get a person out to us until like four, five, six days from that point and w the problem seems to be our modem is bad. Now guys, we just got a brand new modem back in March when I got my new computer we also got a new modem and everything all hooked up and ready to go when I came back with my new, com new computer and started doing videos again we had a new new modem then and so I'm telling my husband like how can this go bad how can our modem go bad that quickly and he's like John I don't think it's the modem I think it's them, something on their end, or in the wiring when they came to hook up that new modem. When they hooked it up, they might have um, messed with some other wires or something. I don't know why it would take this long for it to all of a sudden crap out. But um, so they said it would be just quicker if they mailed us a modem and they'd have it to us in a couple of days. They're going to express it overnight and we have it a couple of days. So that was like on a Tuesday or something, a Monday or Tuesday. We were supposed to have it that following Friday and nope, that day came and went, no modem. We had nothing. So my husband um, called them back. Oh yeah, it's been sent. And oh, they just gave us this runaround. It would have literally been quicker if we had waited the longer time for somebody to come out and fix it. I apologize. I'm bumping my microphone, but it would have been quicker for have somebody else come out and fix it. And no, we didn't. So by now it's like Monday, July, what? First, second, whatever that was. And uh, we're like so mad because we still have not had any internet and it's almost been it's been a week since we it, it cracked out and we talked about it and he talked with some of his friends our th theater friends and stuff and they're all talking about problems with AT&T or whatever and so we decided to cancel our account basically this is what happened we, we canceled our service with AT&T and we signed up with Comcast 
Um, actually, we signed up with Comcast first and then canceled her, or uh, the next day canceled AT&T. So because it was the holiday, they said, Comcast said that they would not be able to have anybody come out until that Friday after the 4th of July to come hook up our service and stuff. So we're like, okay, we waited this long. We'll be fine. Like the day before, like July 3rd, we all of a sudden had internet because they must have either they had time in their schedule. I don't know. They suddenly they came out early and they hooked up our service and we basically had internet instantly. And this we had sent back the modem that AT&T gave us. We sent that back and we had our old modem. Nothing was wrong, guys. Nothing was wrong. It was completely AT&T service that was bad and whatever I I my husband thinks that they really did mess with something in the wiring or something and it just took that long maybe. Maybe when they hooked up they used Comcast's old wiring cuz we have like a lot of wiring. My husband's like super geeky and he has like wires to everything. But we still had some of Comcast's old cables and stuff. And so maybe they hooked up to that. I don't know what they did. But all I know is we sent back their modem. We rehooked to our old modem, the one that we just got in March that we bought ourselves from Best Buy. And it worked. And it's been, ouch. <laughs> it's been great ever since. And actually, since we've been with Comcast, now it's going on a week, over a week now that we've been with them, our internet speed is not only cheaper, or our internet is not only cheaper, the speed is so much faster. I think before we were uploading with AT&T, I think our upload speed was almost five, I think, five MPs. And then our download speed was like at 50 some, 40, 50 something. It wasn't the worst, but it certainly wasn't the best. Now with Comcast and our cheaper service is our upload speed is like at 10 and then our, our download speed is like 70 some. So it's like way better and cheaper. So very, very happy. So that's in a story, a nutshell. That's my story. I'm sticking to it, but <laughs> I don't know how to tell short story guys. I, I apologize, but that is where I have been with all of that dealings and now I'm just being able to get back into recording and making videos and everything so here we are today building this wonderful blueprint so right now I am this is the cold snow biome I guess this is an elderwood tree that we're building by the way if you have problems with building trees like I do I suck at building trees my own trees this blueprint, this guy that did this blueprint, don't mind my dogs, guys. Don't mind my dogs. Don't pay any attention to them doing whatever they're doing. You hear rattling going around. Anyways, this guy knows all about trees because they are right on par. They are so nice. They look like they just originally grew like that, and he built them. So if you have problems building trees and you build this blueprint, you will see learning it's like a nice learning lesson on how to build trees because he it's so nice just how he does it you'll see in the end see what I'm talking about and everything so right now this is I think this is the middle section of the workshop yes it is the section there's like a bed and everything anyway so this is like the middle section I think now of the workshop that you're seeing you can see I did use a little bit of autofill which is how I got that top up there I was starting to get a little bit impatient I put so many hours of building this by myself guys I actually now that I think about it I had help with that magic the magic school uh, the two gaming girls magic school I had help they themselves um, helped me and Avler and a couple other people helped me build that this one I did all by myself I collected all the stuff by myself I built it myself that's probably why it took me so freaking long and that's probably why I feel like this is I had to cut out so much because it would just took forever so here is the part of the farm that I am just putting in and building like the turnips and the horned melons and lettuce and wheat and all of that. So it's nice and neatly put in there. And 
like I was saying earlier, there's they're not connected, but they're close enough that you can just walk from one section to the other without falling through. They're one wick, one wick. They're one block width apart, so it's like you can just go right on over it. You don't fall through, so that's pretty cool. And here you can actually see that um, the, the savanna, the tree, the sand, savanna tree, and the shorewood tree a little bit. You can kind of see they look so natural, like they look so cool. And here I'm just going through putting up all the little stuff now like the teleporters and I put up the beds and the signs and all of that. And there's all of the storage and there is the kill box. That's where the mobs come down through. They come in through the teleporter and they go through the corrupted water and they die and you get the loot out, which is pretty cool, which is different in um, Starscream solution, storage solution, she has just regular water, which works too. They drowned. But this is like a really quick. Using the corrupted water was really fast. And here I am building. This is the weep wood, I think. Um, this is so it's the swampy tree. And it's just, it's so nicely done. It just looks so, I, w I, I want to build trees like this. Yep, it's summertime. I'm here in the um, ice cream truck outside, go through our, our neighborhood. I was like, I don't have any music playing while I'm recording this voiceover. Why am I hearing like music? Oh, it's ice cream truck. You guys probably can't hear any of that, but I can hear it. Anyway, so here's an autumn wood tree with all the pretty cinnamon autumn wooden leaves. My favorite one, the uh, cinnamon autumn wood leaves is my favorite leaves out of those colored leaves. I think they're so super pretty and then this is like a waterfall like it's different I don't know the whole purpose behind it other than maybe he didn't have he wanted the square to be a complete square and so he just added this for like a decoration thing if you know what I mean it's just water like a Roman type um, waterfalls and I I think that that's probably it that he did all the biomes he did the workshop and then he had a chunk left that he wanted to fill in so it'd be complete fill in the um claim and i don't know maybe maybe there's more to it than that i mean it's just it's pretty i like it but there's really other than to get water but you have water in your farm your liquid farm so i don't know yeah and actually when i was building this i normally wait to the very end and do the water not in the blueprint like i take the blueprint out and put on all the liquid stuff but I actually built this time very slowly right here you're seeing me I actually very slowly built filled it in and it actually worked it actually actually worked this time but I think it's because I did it really slow I filled in each block and it, it turned out fine and so this is the point in the it's coming close to the end of this and so I, we're gonna go ahead and jump in to the actual build and I will show you guys how it all came out okay so here we are this is what we've got <laughs> like I said it's different levels as you can see but you can see from here it's really cool how everything is color kind of color coded so you've got the mountains over there and in the center there there i believe that is um i can't think off the hand now but we have gold the adobe yellow adobe floor here and we have some iron wall industrial iron wall there we have some obsidian so it's kind of cool how it's all kind of broken up into kind of colors that but this on the end is where your workshop is so it's like three tall stories tall after the um, corruption. This is all corruption down here. And then, yeah, so this is the tallest point, I think. And so that's pretty cool. I really like it. And then over here on top of this, all of this iron stuff, 
I believe is the farm is part of the farm and then you have all the biomes over here so let's come over here there's really no that I have found a way to get up there are some chains that drop down onto these blocks these red blocks that you see there are some chains that you can crawl on but guys I really really suck crawling up on chains ladders vines any of it so you can see a, a chain over there I just can't I just can't do it. I will struggle with this. So I just glide up there, but we're just going to humor myself for a second and I'm not going to make it. So yeah, there's that. So all of this is corruption under here. You have, I like the checkerboard fashion that he's done. So you have eat every other block is the dirt and then every other is a stone. And then on the outside is the, um, corruption stone wall and then on the very outside is the limestone stuff which is really super cool i like this pattern it's kind of it's very roman like roman-esque stuff these arches and stuff i really like that so if we if we can glide up here which i don't i can't in the water i mean you can in the water I've glide out of water but it's very it's difficult so we'll just come over here and bounce for a minute <laughs> no okay so we'll come over here and get up here so each section is like this. This is the only part that all of them look basically the same. These teleporters, I think, take you to different areas. But every time I jump in one, I go end up in the kill box and almost die. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I don't know if it's just hooked up wrong or what's going on. But so each of the sections are like this, the corruption, and that they go up into the different places up here. So let's come up here. This is going to go up to it looks like the savannah. Uh, the, not the savannah, the desert. So we have up here, this is like the little desert square. And like I said, there's like 16 blocks. So this one is the, the desert. You've got the all different critters are crawling all over. But we know that in the desert spawns the dust evils and trogs. And so that's what will spawn here. And then over here is the mountain. So you have the ramboos that spawn here. And this actually is not that tall. I would figure that this would be a little bit taller, but it's not really that tall. But it's pretty tall, so you can kind of look, get a good look at everything. I just think it's really cool how everything's broken up into little sections. Like, So you have your swamp here, you have your savanna here, you have the desert, your workshop. Yeah, it does take up like three claims, or three claims, three three blocks worth up there is just your workshop and stuff. And then you have the uh, canyon over there and the snow. And anyways, we'll, we'll take a little bit closer here, come down here, and don't, don't fall on. You can just run across without falling in. And this is like the little swampy areas. And like I was saying about these trees, look at this tree. Like it just looks so natural. All of these trees just look so natural. And they're, you know, man player made. So that's pretty cool. And then the, over here is just like the regular grasslands with the autumn wood, which I love this tree. And then over here is this little fountain thing. So I don't really know if it, I think this is just for like a decorative decoration kind of thing but it looks pretty cool it's just fountains coming down um i like it i think it looks really neat and then over here is the jungle here and then you have across from it the canyons and you got a little waterfall here like a little kind of waterfall here and then over here is the snow land over there with an elderwood tree which is really cool looks like that just naturally spawned there and it didn't he built it there I mean, it's just, I'm amazed by people. They're so awesome. And then this is the like grasslands area or whatever. And then you have your, uh, where the shore wood grows, with the tree, the shore wood trees and stuff. And you get all the rocksters and stuff. And then you have some more canyons right here. So a couple of the same, it seems like the a couple uh, biomes kind of repeat themselves, but it's cool. Cool. You do spawn some trogs over here more because I think it's because it's taller maybe. I don't know. But there it is. And then over here is the, like your home base, your farms and stuff all connected. So this is a little farm. I like this with the use of the decorative stone path in with it. I think that's really cool, really neat. So you've got all of this out here and then inside, if we come in here, so we'll start all the way. So it, this it goes down to corruption. This is one, the way you would come up here. Whoops, I'm gonna fall down there. But anyways, you go up here, you have some teleporters, which I think these were hooked up to different places in his place, his world, of course. I will switch them out, probably put one of these to my storage actually. 
And then you have another one here and some more here. And then you have, it's just this little thing. I love this obsidian floor with the limestone wall. I think that's really neat. I really like that. And then this goes up to the next level just above it, which is your sleeping quarters kind of thing, resting area. And then you have some more farms out this way, which is just the wheat farm and cabbage over there. And then you can come out here. It's like a little veranda with your little fire pit. And uh, I can't talk. I just new. And your chairs. And there it is. I think that's really neat. And then it goes up to the very top, which is just, I think, like just a kind of a veranda area, like a, a patio kind of place to get a better view of everything so that's pretty cool i really like how this came out this is really nice this is really really cool it's one of my favorite blueprints i think um i might have to check and see but i don't think he has a whole lot more other than this one but i'll have to check it out and see and then so if we come over here out to here in this section we have the spawner so this is a bunch of chest and like I said if you like like a lot of chests like I do this is not very much room at all it's the only downfall of this build oh look we have something here but this is where they drop in they come in the mobs come in through here they die in the corruption water and out spits this little loot bag which I think is really cool and then you have your liquids farm and by the way I would recommend not putting these in until after you're done with the blueprint, but the liquids, because when I put them in, I thought the f I did done the waterfall over there first and it worked out fine during while I was building the blueprint. But I thought, well, maybe it'll be fine here. Nope. For some reason, it doesn't read this as a slab and it flows over top of it. And so I had a big mess flowing over top. So after it was done, I came back and cleaned it all up and I just put it in. And as you can see, it flows down just fine and dandy against this. So. That is that. And this is supposed to be lava here, but for some reason it freezes up. Maybe it's because I'm up too tall. I'm too high up and it's cold and it just freezes instantly. But somehow I would like to figure out how to put some lava. Probably put some lava maybe flowing in here. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out, guys. If you guys know, let me know in the comments down below how you can get flowing lava out of here as a liquid farm because it just seems to turn into mo to the hardened lava. And I think it might be because I'm up too high. Um, and it's too cold, but it's not cold enough that my cold meter comes up, but yeah, I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. And then we have all the processors and forges, which there's only two forges guys in my book. That's not enough for me. So like I said, I'm probably going to just use this mainly as the different spawner things. Like I can come over here and farm killing animals and stuff. That sounds really mean and brutal, but that's what I'm probably going to use it as. It's not going to be my home base because this, this is just, is not a big enough workshop for me. But it's fine and dandy. I like it. Anyway, so that's that. And then oh, you go right into the biomes there. So I really like how this came out. I think it's really super cool. And uh, it's worth doing. I think if you're looking for some kind of a farm um, kind of, you know, spawner area, that is the one to get, I would say. It looks really cool. I do definitely think I'm going to build like a dock from here out to there so I can just walk across and maybe put a ladder up the side. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm fine also just gliding into it, whatever. <laughs> but that is it, I think, for today's video. It's long enough. I apologize about that, guys, but it is a very, it took me a long time, so you can only cut out so much, I guess. But anyways, there it is. And if you like this for yourself, then go ahead and click on the link. I'll have it in the description down below. You can get it for yourself. And I applaud you, Mr. Fishhook. This is a good job on your part done. I really, really enjoyed doing it. Um, so yeah, I think that will be it for today. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't yet followed me on Twitter, you should do so. I do talk about other things other than video games, things that are going on in my life and whatnot. And if you haven't yet followed me on Twitch, I do live stream. Um, I haven't been live streaming very much recently, but that's about to change. So you can follow me on Twitch. You'll know when I get to live streaming. I do mainly live stream this game, Creative Verse, but I do do other games. So there is that. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I hope you do. I hope you like this and you will. 
I thank you all, and that's going to be it. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Mm, bye.